We're now just going to have a look at the scales of production, part of your GCSE design and technology AQA exam uh, in part of the specialist technical principles section. Uh, you need to understand the four different scales of production and understand the key characteristics of each scale of production. Really, you need to be able to see an object or see a product and understand what scale of production it was manufactured at. Before we start, let's have a quick look at the key words that we'll be thinking about in this video. When we look at each scale of production, we'll be analysing it against the characteristics on the left. So the unit cost, is it a high cost, a medium cost or a low cost item? The tools and equipment, was it made with dedicated specialist tools like a carpenter in his workshop uh, or was it done with general tools uh, that can be used to make a variety of things? Uh, or is it used uh, with specialist tools such as an injection molding machine or a CNC lathe or a CNC router? It can only be used to make a certain few items. We're looking at the initial investment. How much does it cost to buy all the machinery and tools to start manufacturing that product? We think about the production efficiency. Can lots of products be manufactured very quickly and easily or can only one product be manufactured per day because it's labor intensive we'll be thinking about the labor type uh, is it manufactured by skilled workers maybe a carpenter who have had lots and lots of training only they can make that product or is it made by unskilled laborers who just have to be aware that they start off the process and they can stop the process uh, and the cost of that labor other people manufacturing the products, uh, earning high wages, medium wages, or low wages. So we'll start off with our first scale of production, which is continuous production. Continuous production is used to manufacture standardized mass produced products that meet everyday mass market needs. Uh, good examples of this would be your uh, drinks bottles, soft drink bottle or soft drink cans, wine bottles, egg boxes. Uh, I like to think about energy, electricity, uh, petrol, anything that is being constantly used by the masses. So this production is going to run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It's going to Continuous production uh, is used to make products that never change, always need and never change. So they've been the same for a long, long time. Soft drinks bottles are a good example. Um, it's highly automated, uh, it uses CNC machinery uh, that can continuously run for long periods of time without taking a break or only take breaks for maintenance. Uh, we're thinking about the manufacture of products here in their millions. If we looked at those characteristics, therefore, continuous production, the unit cost of, of one unit, so let's say one soft drink bottle, is very, very low. It's a very cheap item. To manufacture, let's say, a soft drink bottle, it uses dedicated tools, so a blow molding machine as part of a flexible manufacturing system. That's a dedicated tool, can only be used to make that one item. That blow molding machine will have a die made specifically for that bottle, and off it goes. It can make um, you know, huge amounts of them, millions of them. Uh, the initial investment to get all of that dedicated machinery is obviously very, very high to buy a blow molding machine. And the efficiency is very, very high as well. It's very quick, very cheap. If you've seen videos uh, of inside the factory or uh, manufacturing continuous products, you see it's incredibly efficient. Manufacturing millions, hundreds of thousands um, in a very small amount of time. The labor type there, in general, the people working on the factory floor will be unskilled laborers. Um, I'm not going to say they've had no training, obviously, but they're, um, they're there to oversee the machinery that is doing the work uh, and check in uh, quality control, uh, being able to maybe do slight bits of maintenance uh, and therefore have relatively low wages. Mass production is very similar to continuous production, uh, products that are produced in high volume using, again, efficient automated manufacturing processes, uh, manufacturing products that follow mass market trends. Uh, biro pens are a good example here. Um, production costs are obviously kept as low as possible. 
the initial investment is very high uh, and it's a very cheap method of production once that initial investment to buy the machinery has been made can manufacture large numbers hundreds of thousands of products uh, very very quickly so very similar to continuous production here uh, it's a low cost item uh, using very dedicated tools can only make that one item uh, needs a very high investment to start with uh, and a very high efficiency it's very quick and very cheap uh, it's got unskilled laborers there workers who have had minimal training on how the machinery actually works the third scale of production we need to look at is batch production now batch production is halfway between mass production and a one-off or bespoke creation um, I like to think of batch production uh, like the flat pack furniture you find in IKEA so it's used to produce identical products that are manufactured in specified or predetermined batches so IKEA would manufacture you know between you know up, up, up to tens of thousands of products before maybe looking at that product redesigning it or taking it out of production or improving or changing it a key feature of batch production is the flexibility of the tooling the machinery and the workforce to enable a fast turnaround of products so this is maybe where a flexible manufacturing system is used or a modular manufacturing system is used where single minute exchange dies can be interchanged into that system for various manufacturing needs uh, for uh, drilling or cutting or or welding or preparing different things so a batch production manufacturing system a flexible manufacturing system can be easily adapted to manufacture different batches of products that allows places like IKEA to be incredibly competitive they can spend one day manufacturing one product change the dyes and the machinery to spend the next day manufacturing another product and so on so batch production results in a lower unit cost than than your bespoke or one-off production but a higher unit cost therefore than mass production so in mass mass production the machinery can do only one specified job with the increasing flexibility of the machinery for batch production there's obviously an increase in cost because the machinery is more sophisticated batch production maybe could be used for seasonal goods or products with a fixed life so the characteristics of batch production is going to be a medium cost item now if we think of ikea furniture it's cheap for furniture standards it's cheaper than one-off bespoke furniture yes but you're still talking you know you could be paying up to hundreds of pounds for that uh, product the tools and equipment we've said is a flex probably a flexible manufacturing system uh, using uh, some kind of modular manufacturing areas using single minute exchange dies to to replace tooling or to change tooling for different methods um the efficiency investment therefore a medium that means it's it's cheaper oh, sorry more expensive um more expensive than um more expensive than standard tooling but maybe cheaper than your big machinery maybe used in huge bottling plants our labor type here is semi-skilled semi-skilled so they're workers who have had some training so training on maybe how to change the single minute exchange dies or change the tooling change the flexible manufacturing system to be able to manufacture another product they're not just people there to ensure that it is running smoothly into quality check they probably have some element of uh, training on the maintenance and the workings of the machinery and therefore they get paid slightly more their wages are slightly higher the last method of uh, or scale of production that you need to know is one-off production or bespoke production or unique production this is the production of an individual product a one-off product uh, something that is tailor-made a great example would be a tailor-made suit or a bespoke dining room table and chairs something that is customized and just for the client a user-centered product a key feature is often that this is very high cost because it's bespoke it's a one-off it requires high levels of skill from the craftsman or the laborer and a high amount of time a large amount of time to produce it all these things um, increase the cost and also maybe um, specialist tools 
or a specialist workshop. If you imagine a carpenter making a bespoke table, he's going to charge a lot more than IKEA who have manufactured a batch of flat pack furniture. Wedding dress is another great example. For one-off production, then our characteristics is that it's going to be a high cost item, something that is very, very expensive. In terms of the tool and equipment, that carpenter who's made your bespoke table and chairs, he probably uses general tools. He'll have the same tools that he uses to make every bespoke item. Therefore, the initial investment of those tools is low. He might have specialist, some, some specialist equipment. But generally, if we're thinking about a table and chairs and a carpenter, in their workshop, they would have general tools that you can use to make lots of different products. The efficiency, therefore, is low. The efficiency to make a bespoke item is low. It's slow and expensive. The labor type is very, very skilled. In order to make a one-off bespoke item, it has to be someone who has had lots and lots of training and therefore would command a high wage. That high wage lots of training um, contributes to the high cost of the item. So there are four scales of production. We have one-off production, unique production, batch production, mass production, and continuous production.